Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bumi, and I'm here to bring you uh, a talk about enhancing Anklung rehearsals with technology. But first of all, a little bit about me. So I come from this corner of the planet, in the corner of the map that you never look at, uh, probably. <laughs> in this small city called Bandung, Indonesia. So um, this is the third, third largest city of my country by population, and it is the home of the Angklung. Um, I was born and raised in uh, Bandung, and now I'm currently a software engineer for Henge, which is based in Tokyo, Japan. We are a business-to-business -business cloud security provider, and uh, we are also looking for interns. So if you are interested in having an internship in Tokyo, uh, come talk to me later. Uh, I have been an Anklung enthusiast for over 10 years. I have been, uh, uh, since I joined uh, my high school club, uh, and since then I've been a performer in Italy, Greece, Malaysia, and uh, many other countries. I've been conducting several concerts and performances, but uh, I've been interested in programming for a whole lot more than that. So naturally, I've been tinkering with uh, software solutions to the problems I face in Anklung rehearsals, which has inspired me to bring this talk to you. So first of all, um, before we get into this talk, have, has anyone ever heard of Anklung before? One? OK, nice. So um, this is the Anklung. It's basically um, made all of bamboo. It has a frame and two tubes, one the small tube and one the larger tube. Uh, both of those tubes, when shaken, when the instrument is shaken, uh, both of those tubes produce a sound, a specific note. So um, the vibration of those, uh, the, the length of those tubes are, are what de determine the, the pitch or the note of this, uh, of the anklung. So uh, that's why we have a bigger anklung that produces uh, lower notes and smaller anklung that produces higher notes. So um, when we know that un uh, one anklung only produces one note, so we need a lot of anklung to produce a whole song, right? So, um, we can, you can think of uh, one anklung as representing one key on a piano. So um, the bigger anklung are the keys are the keys on the left of the piano, which are the lower notes, and the smaller anklung are the are the keys on the uh, right side of the piano, which are the higher notes. So um, this is an example of an anklung orchestra. You can see here there are about like um, twenty ish. 30-ish players, um, each holding one to five anklung. In, in this particular case, probably about four of anklung each person. Um, yeah, and they are led by a conductor and several other uh, accompanying instruments. So here, I'm gonna show you a little cl a clip to show you about what anklung really can produce. <laughs> Anyone recognize that song? <laughs> of course, yeah, it's the Star Wars main theme. So um, yeah, that just gives you a picture of uh, what kinds of song uh, an anklung can, or the anklung can uh, play. So uh, basically any kind of song that you can imagine, it can be arranged and played by the anklung, from classical music to soundtracks to popular music to anything, actually. So yeah, um, now we get to the problem where um, there are a lot of anklung in a team, right? Uh, which, with all kinds of shapes and sizes. And we have, uh, a, we have several uh, people that are ready to hold the anklung. So the problem is how do we distribute those uh, anklung to those people? Well, you might think, well, we can just distribute them randomly, right? We can just give them uh, whatever anklung they want. And well, it is kind of possible, but uh, there are, uh, there are constraints that we need to consider uh, that makes us we can't, we can't uh, distribute the anklung randomly. But first, uh, to give you a clearer picture of that, 
of what those problems are, what those constraints are, I need to introduce you to um, the sheet music, which is specifically for the Anklung, or a music score, or whatever you like to call it. So when we think about sheet music, the, the idea, the picture that comes to mind is something like this, probably, right? Well, um, Anklung does not use this kind of sheet music. Uh, it's different from the Western, Western uh, sheet music, but instead, it uses something called the cipher notation, or in Indonesian, it is called not angka, which, is, which can be literally translated as number notes. So um, sorry to disappoint you here, but the cipher has nothing to do with cryptography. Rather, the cipher here uh, is called, uh, it's, it's called a cipher notation because the cipher here uh, shows that the, the notes, the musical pitches that we hear are encoded into numbers. So this is an example of the Anklung sheet music. Um, as you can see here, uh, there are several notes. And uh, you read this sheet music from uh, the top left to the bottom right. Um, those lines are bar lines. And um, each, each beat is represented by one column there. So um, uh, the, the numbers there represent uh, notes, and the, the, the dots above or below the numbers represent the octaves. So if there are more dots on the bottom, that means it's the same note but with a, with a lower octave. And if there are dots above the numbers, that means um, uh, the same note but on a higher octave. And the, the numbers with uh, slashes on them, uh, they mean the, the flats and sharps. So if, the, if it has a forward slash, then it means that note with a sharp. And if it has a backslash, then it means that note but with a flat. So um, when uh, we, read, we read it left to right, and then the numbers in the same column are played in the same beat at the same time. So as you can see here, there are several uh, notes. Like for example, these two notes are played at the same time. So they cannot be, say, be, be played by the same person because it is, it, it is hard to play two anklung at the same time. On the other hand, there are notes like this that only, that only appear like uh, one beat in, throughout the whole song, which means we cannot just give one player that note, otherwise he would just be left on the stage only playing one note and uh, uh, only playing like one second or two from, for the whole song, which is kind of sad for that player, right? So we have to take care of those things. We also have to take care that uh, one player does not get uh, all the big anklung. And like, for example, um, one player gets all the, the lower notes, and all, one player gets all the higher notes. Because that would mean the, the, player, uh, their, the player's hands would become full with the smaller anklung, and it would be hard to uh, reach them. So we need a good balance of big and small anklung for each player. So this is an example of a good uh, anklung balance. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, this one player here has uh, the, the big anklung, which is like uh, the, the length of his, uh, the height of his shoulder. And then there are also a smaller anklung, which he can hold on his uh, arm, uh, on his hand, I mean. So. Uh, there are various sizes of anklung, and we need to take care to distribute them as to not uh, as to have a good balance. So, um, how do we solve this problem? Um, well, before before we thought about how to uh, create some kind of like algorithm or program to solve it, um, we used to solve it manually using this kind of table. This is called uh, we used to call it a tonjo table, which uh, or a collision table which uh, denotes that which notes appear together with other notes in the same score. So um, you, can see, uh, you can see the rows there are the individual notes. And then if you follow the notes to the right of them, you can see every square is connected to another note. So we color code them by how much they, they appear together. And the, the, darker note, the darker squares mean they can absolutely cannot be played together. And the lighter squares mean that, well, yeah, they can be played together. And they will collide once or twice, but there has to be another player that covers that uh, specific instance. So um, 
I, I thought about how to solve this using, using uh, programming, using technology. So uh, I wrote up an algorithm for this. So uh, first of all, uh, we, we take a sheet, Ankling sheet music, um, which is, as you can see here, uh, this row column lay layout it looks like uh, something input in a specific type of program, right? Which is, yeah, you guessed it, <laughs> a spreadsheet program. So we usually write it in a spreadsheet program and then we extract it, extract the important parts, um, uh, which is the notes, and then we we divide it. We divide the notes according to the 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 order we read the the lines, and then we uh, stitch them together into one one huge line, and then. Uh, this is how we actually read the music, but we can't have that on a piece of paper, so we divide it like this. And then after we, we stitch them together, we read it as usual from left to right, and then we take note of which uh, notes appear where, how, how many times they appear in that score, and also um, which notes they appear closer together to which, uh, which other note. So, um, basically, this is the uh, code in Python I wrote for that, and um, basically it means that um, the I basic idea is that um, we uh, add uh, to, we have a two-dimensional array, and we have uh, we add uh, the notes to those columns um, until we reach the end of the score, and then uh, we process those those uh, information until we get two pieces, two key pieces of information, which is uh, what I like to call the collision table and the playtime information. The collision table um, oh, a, um, means like uh, which note uh, appears closer together to uh, which other note, how many times. Like um, there's a formatting error there, but basically the, the Q, W, and E's represent the the ones, twos, and threes, and um, in this specific example, the 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 one note and the two note, the do note and the re note, uh, appear together about 13 times, and then uh, the do note and the mi note appear uh, about 40 times. So um, basically, we we count the appearances of those notes and how much they appear together with with other other um, notes. And the playtime information is like um, how how many beats, or uh, yeah, how many beats uh, does that uh, note or Ankun play in that song? Like um, we can quantify those, um, and then we can calculate the collision table using this kind of uh, algorithm. And uh, so basically, um, this algorithm uh, means that. Uh, you can see here that we iterate through the score. Um, we, we look at the Anklungs per column, and then, uh, and then we find in the same column which notes appear together, and then we count the, the uh, occurrence of those notes. And then we, uh, until we uh, go, go through the whole score, and then after that, uh, we get the, that kind of table. And then for the playtime information, it's also simple. Um, we calculate the playtime, and uh, we we go through the score, and then we calculate, uh, like we count how uh, how many how many times this this note appears in the score. So if we find this note, then we just uh, increment the note by one, or uh, according to duration. So if if there is a like a half beat, then we uh, increment the number of uh, we increment the uh, number of beats by half beat and so on. So um, that way, we we get those that um, this these two kind of um, information. And what do we do with the, those information? Then we optimize the, the distribution based on the uh, these three constraints. So these three constraints are the most important. Uh, constraints we need to consider when creating a, an Ankling distribution, uh, which is we need to minimize the number of collisions, which is uh, we need to minimize uh, one player 
the occurrence of one player getting two Anklung that appear together in the score, but we need to maximize the, the, the amount of playtime for that player. So um, that, player, th that player needs to play as much as possible without their Anklung colliding with each other. And then uh, we need to uh, achieve a good balance of size of the Anklung. So um, we need to give them like big Anklung and also smaller Anklung. So, um, they can, they can uh, play the Anklung more comfortable. So this is kind of like, um, uh, this is kind of like uh, optimization problem in mathematics. Uh, there, there, is, there are lots of uh, ways to solve this uh, optimization problem. Uh, I, I came up with uh, an algorithm that basically um, we, we assign a weight to each of those um, to each of the, the um, players. And then when, when we, we go through all of the Ankung that we need to distribute, and then um, for, for each of the Ankung that we need to distribute, uh, we, we uh, assign a weight based on the uh, collision table. So if the collision table, we, we look up the collision table and we see if the, if the um, number is high, then that means uh, the weight is decreased, which means don't give the, the Anklung to that player because it will collide with that player's other Anklung. And we also look at the playtime, and we, um, we decrease the weight based on the playtime of that Anklung, so, which basically means if that player already has Anklung, uh, which plays a lot in that score, don't give this Anklung, Anklung to that player because it will make that player play too much. We need to distribute um, the the playtime so that every player has like a rough equal number of of playtime. And then um, we also look at uh, if the anklung is considered a low note anklung or bigger anklung, uh, and then that an that player already holds a bigger anklung, then we should not give the uh, bigger anklung to that player because that. Uh, a player already has a big Anklung. So we need to find uh, those players that still have uh, small Anklungs, that still have uh, not too much playtime, so uh, we can add more playtime to that, to that player. And um, yeah, we sort um, the, the weights, and then we pick uh, which, which Anklung that in that pool of Anklung that we need to distribute has the lowest weight, uh, has the highest weight, and then we give it to that player. So we iterate a um, bunch of times. This is probably not as optimized as I would like, but um, there are much more ideas out there that ha I haven't explored yet, including um, there was a talk this morning that talked about, um, uh, also talking about um, optimization problems and how to uh, look uh, find the optim optimal value, and I also uh, would like to try that out uh, in this problem because this is basically a general problem, an optimization problem, and we, there are a lot of ways to solve this. So um, there are many possibilities for future improvements uh, of the the way, way we distribute Anklung with with technology. And, uh, and also, there are a lot of problems other than this distribution problem uh, that we can solve with technology, but uh, this field is still, um, uh, is still being explored by uh, a lot of uh, Anglong players, and it's, uh, it's, just, uh, it's just starting to, to progress. So uh, we'll see in the future if, if um, a lot uh, problems like these that we that we see in Ankung playing uh, can be solved with technology. And also in this talk, I kind of skipped on a lot of details, including like how to read um, key signatures and how to calculate them, how to convert uh, notes from uh, relative notes to absolute notes, uh, etc. But since I still have time, uh, I'd like to come back and explain to you. So. Um, here we have, uh, maybe not this one. Yeah, this one we have a key signature, um, which is uh, the do here equals f. So 
Um, uh, these these notes, uh, these number notes are still relative. They don't show an absolute number, uh, absolute note like C, D, E, F, G. So we still need to convert these uh, these relative notes to uh, an absolute note like C, D, uh, etc. According to the key signature, and the key signature information is above. So um, it's just a sim simple matter of uh, looking up in the uh, in a in a predefined table we we uh, store, uh, which maps uh, each uh, letter to uh, a relative note. And then if we find that relative note, then we just um, look up that table and then convert it into a into a, a absolute note, which is what the uh, the anklungs are are um, labeled in. So. These anklungs are labeled with absolute notes instead of relative notes. So every time we switch a song or switch a key signature, those anklungs play a different number, and then um, the players have to convert which uh, so uh, what it, what note they are playing with that anklung. Yeah. And. Yeah, I guess um, basically that's it. Um, and if you want to, are interested in uh, an in, in internship in Japan, you can uh, visit this uh, URL here. Thank you. And I have uh, time for questions too, so if anyone has any questions. Wow, yeah, I am considering uh, so the question was, uh, am I considering or using on um, using a uh, uh, linear problem? Yeah, yeah. Uh, solve it to um, for for this problem. And yeah, um, actually, I haven't explored a lot of uh, those automated solvers yet. But yeah, I think it's a it's a good prospect for for us Anklung players. Hmm? Uh-huh. So players have to like throw So the question was uh, if if we have several songs in a performance, then do those uh, players change their anklung and uh, switch or, or whatever? Actually, uh, we don't. So uh, we, in, in the rehearsals, we have to consider every song that we are going to perform in the same performance, and we have to optimize all of those songs together. So um, the, the, the distribution of the anklung itself does not change throughout the performance. So they hold the same anklung, and uh, so we need to, to take consideration of all of those songs together as a whole performance, yeah. Yes? Okay, so the question was, um, is there going to be new music that people will write because the, the distribution problem is solved easier, right? Well, um, actually, um, first of all, we don't write uh, original music that often in Anklung. We usually uh, tra um, transcribe or uh, arrange uh, songs that are uh, already made, and then we translate them to Anklung so that we can play them, but um, if you are asking, are 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 we going to decide to arrange more complicated songs or more harder songs that to distribute? Well, maybe not, because actually, when we decide to play a song or arrange a song, we just think about uh, we don't we don't really consider like um, if if the distribution is hard or not, because we only know if it's hard or not after the song is. Is made after the song is arranged, right? Like we already, oh, we only know the distribution of the notes after the song is uh, arranged. So before that, we can't imagine if the song is hard to distribute or not. And um, because since this is a optimization problem, we can't really find like the best song to uh, the easiest song to distribute or like the best distribution there has to be. Like um, it depends on the the conductor and also. 
uh, the manager of the team, like how, how they decide to distribute the Anklung. So yeah, um, there can be lots of different distributions from, from the same song even, so yeah. Uh -huh. so oh, if yeah. Look at players who have been playing for 20 years, they might be able to handle different sizes or different times or more than a player who's brand new. That's a good question. So the question was uh, does this algorithm cons uh, consider or would consider uh, player experience? People that have uh, a lot of experience on Clung tend to be able to handle uh, more on Clung easier, uh, easily, and like um, different sizes of on Clung easily, and they can also handle uh, collisions more easily. They, they know what to do when their Anklung uh, collides with one another and so on. Well, uh, that was an idea. Uh, I, I considered it before, but after several um, iterations maybe, I thought that um, it doesn't matter that much because you can't really quantify uh, player experience uh, and then translate it to uh, a criteria of, of that uh, optimiz optimization problem. Like, um, for example, if that, if that player has five years of experience, then how do you determine the weight of that player um, relative to the other players? So yeah, uh, it's, it's a good point to consider, but it's really hard to quantify, that's all. Any other questions? All right then, thanks for listening. <laughs>